Hi, this is Mark Rosen from WCCO TV, and it's my pleasure to introduce my good friend Ron Henderson, the Fitness King, presenting Motivation, one word to help change your life. Welcome to Motivation. I'm Ron Henderson, a.k.a. The Fitness King. I'm excited about today's show. I have the pleasure of having Hapso Muhammad on Motivation. She's an author and a speaker as well, I believe so. Welcome to Motivation. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. We're going to get up close and personal. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Now, let's I know you, you're, you're an author and you, you just recently wrote a book. Yes. Before we talk about your book, give us a little background, a little history about you. Now, I went online, I did all this research, but I want to hear it just face to face with you. Where did you grow up? What was your childhood like and, and that type of stuff? All right, um, so I was born in the refugee camp in Kenya and came here when I was 10 years old. Okay, so you were born in, in Kenya, Kenya, refugee camp. Refugee, you were born in there? Yes. Okay. And how long were you at the refugee camp? Till I was 10 years old. Okay, so what is it like in a, in a refugee camp? I just want a little history about that. What is it's it a like? lot different from here. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, um, I mean, we, it was it was amazing. I um, In a camp? Yes. And you did they have schooling there too um, for you? They actually did, but then it wasn't as, you know, how do I say this? It wasn't as great as here. Mm -hmm. say. Ten years. Ten years. Um, and the thing is, is because of, I mean, like the teachers even um, tend to like, you know, move back and forth as well. Um, they lead the refugee camp mm -hmm. and then um, also some uh, some new teachers do come. And then also the, the students, they tend to leave and then some of the, some new ones come in. So it's it's a lot like, you know, the transition is a bit different. Really? But yeah. you were there, the other people are leaving, but you're there for ten years. I was there for ten years and there are kids that are still there until, wow. you know, that never made out. Wow. Did you have other uh, siblings with you? Yes, but all my siblings and I, like, we all came to the United States at the same time. Okay, but there, how many siblings do you have? Thirteen, including me. How many were so at the refugee, refugee camp with you? With me, um, there were eight. Wow. Yeah. Okay. How did you guys, how did you guys support yourself? Um, so, it was, you know, with the UN that used to, you know, um, support us and whatnot, and also, like, my grandmother. Uh, my uncles were, you know, back here in America, mm -hmm. and then they would send her money, and then she would share some money with us, and then the other money would go to the neighbors, and would help, you know, kids that don't have anything to eat, or, you know, that don't have the opportunity to go to school, like, she would, you know, help them as well. Right. So, that's where I got most of my traits from, my mm -hmm. grandmother. Okay. Did you graduate from, uh, whatever, you said tenure, how old were you when you left there? Um, I was uh, 10 years old. 10 years old, so you're yes, like in yeah, elementary, now. elementary school? Yes. Wow. We speak good English. <laughs> I learned. <laughs> so at a refugee camp, are they nice to you? You know, what, what is it like? Because you're here right now, there's all these people, uh, Honduras, different places, there are different types of camps. Yes, I mean, like ours was like pretty safe. I mean, um, it was in like as well and that's the very reason why we left you know um like our family i've never been to somebody so i was right, right. Really, you know, oh, yeah. there. so i didn't know what it like you know the experiences that people were you know fleeing now uh, being kidnapped being and kidnapped different things oh, yeah. like, oh, yeah. i didn't know what it was like mm -hmm. um so the people that came to Kenya, like that was like a place for them to be safe and you know have their homes there and it was like Kenya. A home to, yeah it was a home to many somali communities so you never had because i heard they, they call it greasing of the palms with the police in Kenya. <laughs> they always say they'll stop and you got to give them a little oh, money. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> from time to time it happens, but like in the refugee camp, it really doesn't. I mean, like from the time that I remember, I don't right. know about now, maybe things have changed. Okay. Uh, were you writing at all, you know, as a child? Did you do any writing? Did you have like a journal? Did you do any writing at all? I used to write in Swahili. Okay. As yeah, a, but then I was not a writer. Right. I was never a writer. Like, I just used to write about, you know, what I'm going through and then the, you know, uh, um, like what my hopes and dreams were. And that's actually what this book is about. As a young girl, mm -hmm. I wanted to, you know, uh, um, become something, you know, and like it was... Well, you are something. I mean, now I am. Mm -hmm. I'm more than something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> but, um, and I want a lot of the young girls to know that, you know, that they are more than, you know, more than just themselves, you know, that they can do anything in this world and... Just be fearless and be you. Right. Yeah. So you're writing in your journal yes. uh, just about your life. And, yeah. and why were you doing that? Because um, like, it seems like it's more common with women than men. 
Yeah, I mean, the reason why I used to write was because, you know, I would, you know, go to school and, you know, um, come back home. I mean, like, we never really had homework. Right. We would have, like, exams to take at schools and whatnot. Like, but then those exams were not as, you know, uh, um, like, we, we had to go home and, like, study for it. You know, okay. it wasn't it wasn't so um, challenging, I would say. Okay. Was it was it hard Was it hard in school too? And the reason I'm asking you this is because you said you went to Kenya. Mm -hmm. You you speak small Somali. I speak Somali. Okay. You speak Swahili too. A little bit. Little, okay. So were they teaching? Kidogo, 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 kidogo. kidogo, kidogo. <laughs> were they speaking Swahili? Were they teaching in Swahili? Uh yes. Was that hard for you? It was actually not because I grew up learning Swahili. Mm -hmm. And my mom used to speak to us in Swahili, and I mean, she also spoke in Somali. Mm -hmm. um, so it was it was not as hard as you know when I came here and learning English. Um, I mean, that wasn't hard as well because you know um, I used to always read mm -hmm. as part of like you know it was it was more of like not like a pleasure time for me to like just have sit down and read, but it was like more of you know my play time. Right, right. I would use my play time to go and read. Right. And it was because, you know, the times that I was dealing with mental health and, you know, um, where, you know, my mom would not want me to, to be at the playground sure. because of, you know, the fact that kids would make fun of me. Sure. She would rather keep me in the house and you know, right. just do my homework. And, and do, you mind, do you mind talking about that when you say mental health? What aspect were you dealing with? Do you mind talking about that at all? So, um, to be honest, I still don't know. Like, and what, I, like, I know that I was dealing with mental health, and I was in and out of the hospital. But until today, mm -hmm. I didn't even like went on and you know research about what, or like you know. So nobody ever clarified know. exactly. Yes, okay. nobody really did, mm -hmm. um, and I never took the initiative to mm -hmm. you know really find out about it because I was in denial, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm like. A month ago, I came out public and saying that you know I actually, I mean this is actually part of me. Mm -hmm. It's part of my identity, and I'm proud to embrace it. Right. I mean, not many people can come out proudly and say that hey, you know, I was especially from our community, because that's like a, 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 it's a taboo in our culture. To There's a lot of things it. that are taboo like that. Yes. <laughs> and it's in many cultures, mm -hmm. not just only within the Somali community, but mm -hmm. you know, in many cultures. And I hope to really change that and be a, uh, 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 be a voice for those uh, children. A voice and a beacon. With, yes, right. that okay. are dealing with mental health. Yes. And to make sure that they understand that it's not, you know, the end of their future, but it's the start of something great. Right. And so you left Kenya, mm -hmm. and where did you go? Um, so when we left Kenya, we came here, um, and not in Minnesota, it was like, like in Fargo. Okay. We lived there for two years and then moved to um, St. Cloud. Was that a shock to your system, that cold Fargo? Actually, we came in the summertime. Okay. So it wasn't as, you know, mm -hmm. shocking as, okay. you know, maybe. So you, you, you got here, what year was it you came to Fargo? Um, 2004. 2004. And then we moved to St. Cloud in 2006. And when did you actually start writing your book? Um, so I, like, it wasn't only this book that I wrote, like, there's four other books that... Oh, published? Yeah, not published, yeah, four not published yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, like, um, this was the one that I decided to publish. There was four other books that I wrote, and really, um, one of them was about my life, you know, exactly mm -hmm. what I've dealt with, as a mental, and that's the one that's going to come out pretty soon, okay. I'm not going to announce the date yet, okay. um, and that's about, you know, mental health and, you know, um, like teaching children at a very young age and the importance of right. being kind at a very young age. Oh it's, yes, it's yeah. it's really important, right? Oh, yes. So I agree. So, so you you wrote this book. It only what is it? It's, it only takes a yes. It only takes one yes. It only takes one yes. Yeah. Okay. Like um, so, UNESCO is like Un uh, United Nations Scientific and Education. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, 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 um, scientific education organization. So what happens is um, they, uh, like, I mean, like, I'm a representative for UNESCO Center for Peace. So what I do with them is I represent children, women, and youth. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And I um, have done, like, you know, different speaking engagements and, you know, done with the model UN that they had during the summer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was phenomenal. And, um, like, so during that time, like, I was learning about the sustainable development goals that the UN wants to reach by 2030. Mm -hmm. um, and that is the global goals, okay. and that's what my book is about. So I, well, I was like, if we're talking about these global, uh, sure. you know, uh, um, how do I say this? 
if we're talking about you know these global issues and want to mm. address it by twenty, and like I mean, want to meet this agenda by twenty thirty, we got to make sure that this generation of kids that are left behind are included into right. the conversation, mm -hmm. are part of this movement. So um, what happened was, you know, I came about writing this book and, and mm -hmm. like you know, is that self published? Yes, it's self published. Mm. That's going to be expensive. It Hardcover. Is. That is. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes you have. Can to you show? Can you show the camera? Just. Aim it towards the camera. Yes, it only takes one yes. Yes. Okay. And you wrote that totally yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's been the feedback from it? I mean, a lot of people have been saying like it's such an inspirational book, and mm -hmm. I mean, like even for children to see themselves, they're like, you know, I get to see myself in this book. Right. And actually, I'm gonna share. Yeah, open up. Yeah. yeah. Right there. So, like, as you guys can see, the last page, it's. Yeah, what's your it's goals? Like about the, yeah, mm -hmm. what's your goal? And these are like the 17 sustainable development goals in, mm -hmm. uh, like for the event. And these are the goals that I've covered. And also, whenever I'm doing book reads at schools, I make sure I ask children, like, do you guys all look, like, do they all look the same in this right, picture? Exactly, like, no. exactly right, exactly. And I'm like, do you all look the same in, in this room? And they're right. like, no, right? right? And I tell them, like, our difference is what really brings us together. And that's why, like, I yes. subscribe to goal four and goal 10. Mm -hmm. um, goal 10 is like reduce inequalities that, you know, we, sh we shouldn't, Based on our gender or like mm -hmm. our uh, like, you know whatever it sure. is. Mm -hmm. Can I see that? Mm -hmm. Let's see it for a second. Not close it. Let's see it for a second. Yeah. That's you on the back. That's me. Okay. <laughs> nice. Very nice. It actually this inspires me because I had planned on doing a book about my life actually, and we did comic books years ago when I first started, King and the Kids. Uh, with my kids on there and all that stuff because I think it's important especially African-American kids to see African-Americans in book form like that you know right. you see the superheroes and different things and uh, and that's the thing with the Rosie the river like I mean they weren't only um, like white women that mm -hmm. were the Rosies but it was also like black women as well that right. were you know part of that World War II uh, uh, um, like you know movement you know right. and that also inspired me and I wanted to make sure kids see it like kids see it in you know mm -hmm. books yeah. Were you doing that? I mean, you were. I saw. I saw a video, and you actually wore that scarf in there, so yes, people come I right do. in. They can identify with yes, that. Yes, yeah. yes. I do that when I'm doing book reads. I make sure right. that I look like the character. Oh, yeah. And whenever, like whenever I'm doing a book, kids are like, "Oh my God!" So that's you. Oh, yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, that's me." Yeah. And um, like you know, it it, it 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 like creates that moment. Like they mm -hmm. got it. Like I tell them, like I'm like, just be strong and be you because right. you are smart. And you are, you know, fearless, and you can right. change the world. So if you're that's the message that children need to hear that what? from adults that they're strong, yes. that they're smart, and they can change the world. Mm -hmm. One child at a time. One child at a time. One voice it at a time. It only takes one. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So if you're walking somebody through the book, just briefly walk me through the book. What is it? If you're really getting into the book, what is it about, and how does it end? So the book is about you know a young girl you know that ha like her wishes are parallel to mm -hmm. the UN global goals and she has a lot of different wishes. Mm -hmm. um, she's like the queen of the jungle, but then it's also you know her being the queen of our nation. Mm -hmm. And whenever I'm doing book reads, I also tell children that they are the kings and the queens of our nation, mm -hmm. and I want them to protect it just like how Nasri mm -hmm. is protecting our nation. Um, and she has like many different wishes and then her mom tells her that she's already the queen of the jungle mm -hmm. which is you know when kids many times we tend to tell them like you know they are uh, I mean like what do you want to be when you grow up rather exactly. than telling them that they already are the next you know um, teacher if they want right. to be or the next author or the next president mm -hmm. I mean that's what I tell them and that's what her mom tells her in this book that she's already the queen of the jungle mm -hmm. and she's like you know if i wanted to be the best queen here and that's where i should start right. so if you want to be the best author the best mm -hmm. president or whatever that you want to be mm -hmm. you got like you got to start today to be the best that like you know to be the best person that you can be right. to be the best or whatever you're whatever doing. that you're doing right. absolutely yes. so um that's what this book is but and at the end like she uses whatever uh, 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 uh um like resources that she had to make a difference mm -hmm. that you don't have to be the wealthiest person and that, mm -hmm. and that's what she teaches young children that you don't have to have all the power in the world that whatever that you have is what you can use to make a difference mm -hmm. I like that I yeah. like that so if somebody wanted to get a copy of your book where would they go 
So um, currently, I'm not selling it on Amazon mm -hmm. or like or Barnes and Noble, but they like it's in my website. Oh, you want to so make you? She wants to really make you want to book. See, I yes, like that. It's yes. good strategy. So, okay. um, what's your website? Onlyoneyes.org. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And how about for speaking engagements? How would somebody get a hold of you for that? Um, Same my site? email. Yeah. So, like, my email is on the website, so they can email me if they want me to do book reads at their school, like, uh, do any speaking engagement. Okay. The other books that you wrote, that they're there but you haven't published them yet, what are they about as well? So it's like a um, series of this book, you know, mm -hmm. how like Nas like, has a lot of different hope and then it's like, you know, um, Nas are uh, dealing with mental health, that's the next mm -hmm. book that's coming out, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, and then the other ones are like, uh, uh, um, like her adulthood and then what she, mm -hmm. so it's like a start of her childhood and then mm -hmm. it just, you know, goes on. Have you put any... Somali in there at all, or Swahili, which I think would be actually great. Oh yes, one or two I actually, things in there. Uh, I mean, like not in not inside the book, but I mm -hmm. um, like I'm gonna be printing new copies of uh, different languages, and that's what I'm working on. It's gonna be published again in Somali, mm -hmm. and um, in Spanish, mm -hmm. um, and in Chinese, and Urdu. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's one language I've never learned. Arabic, Arabic, Arabic. Yes. Yeah, I've learned Arabic. Arabic. Yeah, yeah. Arabic. yeah. <laughs> so it's available to all children because every kid that's in here I want to make sure that their languages are represented as well right. in this book. And I I heard too you're you have an invitation possibly to go to the White House. What is that about? How did you get that? Because I want to go. I'll be I'll be her bodyguard. Come with me. I met I met I met Donald Trump how many years ago? I met him how many years ago? I had my ponytail back then. Nineteen it would have been I'm sixty I'll be sixty five so when I was forty I met Donald Trump. And he met in town, shook his hand, met his wife at that time. Uh, so this would be the second opportunity I would have to meet him if I came as your bodyguard. Mm. Wow. What do you think of that, folks? <laughs> He'll be a good bodyguard, right? <laughs> 24 years doing bodyguard work. <laughs> yeah. So yes. how did that happen? I'm curious. So about that's that. actually where the title of my book came from. Mm -hmm. So I was at the UN Plaza and, um, like, you know, the hotel there. And the I, UN Plaza? Yes. You get around. I do. I'm going to talk to my wife. I said, wife, i got to hang with this lady. She's got some connections. <laughs> so I, um, it was in July, and I actually didn't even have a book title at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you could imagine, like, I'm trying to publish my book and don't even have a book title. I mean, oh, yeah. it's fine, right? I haven't titled my so, book yet, and I'm mostly done with it. Yes. Yeah, so, um, like, that was in July. And what happened was I was at the lobby, and we were, like, we just happened to, have a conversation. He was sitting next to me, Ruben Eagle. I hope I'm saying his mm -hmm. first name right, pronouncing it right. Um, so we were just talking, and it was also like uh, Fernando too. Like he's also the president for the um, United States Global Leadership Council, and Ruben is the chair for that uh, um, organization. So we were just talking, and then um, I started talking about my, you know, book. Mm -hmm. And um, and then he was like, you know, and he started sharing with his, like sharing with me about mm -hmm. his journey and how one yes led to the other. Mm -hmm. And it was the same for me. It was me saying mm -hmm. yes to myself right. because mm -hmm. it starts from you. Oh, yeah. If you don't say yes to yourself, you're not gonna right. really progress and move forward with with your dreams and aspirations. So he was like, bingo, there goes your book title. It only mm -hmm. takes one yes. He said bingo, there goes your book title, <laughs> and you agreed. And I agreed, and right. I was like, wow. Because yeah. this is what this sure. book is all about. Yeah. Um, so, and then Fernando was like, it would be great if, you know, once you're done, we would love to invite you at the White House, mm -hmm. you know. And I was like, you know, that would be, I was excited. And I mean, a lot of people might tend to see it as something that's negative. No. You know, or like, I mean, at the end of the day, it's what I, I don't what you bring to the table. Yes. It's really what you bring to the table. And you got to be fearless. Exactly. And I'm, I'm, do, uh, I'm, that's I'm, what you're bringing. It's, it's what I bring exactly. in. And I want to tell people, like, take the risk and exactly. be, be fearless and exactly. just, you know, go with your heart. You have everything to gain. You really have nothing to lose when you're truly being yourself. Absolutely. And I want to make sure that young children see that, you know, um, that they're being represented everywhere. Yes. You know, so I want to make sure that I give them those hope and dreams that they can do anything that you know mm -hmm. you don't have to go on based because a lot of the times it's like you know do you fit in this group or do you fit in that group you know right. but you gotta just be yourself and be you I agree because nobody else can be you but yourself I agree yeah of the characters that you have in your book how many what characters actually relate to people in real life or 
do they all relate to somebody that you come in contact with? Yes, mm -hmm. because I mean, I have you know, um, like African American kids represented in here. Mm -hmm. um, I have Somali kids represented, which is like the main character. Mm -hmm. um, I have you know, um, all Asian kids, kids, no adults, no adults. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I say making children equal partners. Right. Because I want to make sure that the adults understand that we've got to give these children the lead to be the change makers, to be the agents of change. Mm -hmm. So that's why I have them all in here because it's kids from all over the world that right. I want this book to look like the world and that's what it is. Right. What, if I were to ask you one question involving who's your favorite or what's the, what's the best book that you've read yourself in the last two years, what would you say it's been? My favorite book in the world. Yeah, because you gotta be you have to be reading because you have so much knowledge coming out of you. You gotta be reading. <laughs> so my favorite book was Or give me one of them, yes. One of them was like Wangari Mathai, like the book that she wrote about um, the Green Leaf movement that she started mm -hmm. in uh, the Green Belt movement right. in uh, in Kenya. Right. And really like that woman is, you know, phenomenal. She actually came to our school mm -hmm. in two thousand and seven. I mean I wasn't there at that time, I was a right. seventh grader. Mm -hmm. But um, she, like, you know, was the woman, like, gave me a lot of hope mm -hmm. to really make it different. Because she was, she could have had it all. And because she, she came into the Western world and, mm -hmm. you know, um, could have stayed here and, right. you know, be herself and just, you know, live on her dreams. Mm -hmm. But what she did was, you know, went back and make a difference. Oh, yeah. And it started the Green Belt Movement. Mm -hmm. And that's what I hope to do, to start mm -hmm. a, 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 a literacy programs mm -hmm. in the refugee camps and build libraries mm -hmm. and schools in the future. Mm -hmm. That's what you will do. That's what I will yeah, do yeah. because she inspired me to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's, those are some, like I, I mostly read inspirational books yeah. mm -hmm. that you know can bring knowledge to me and like different books from different people and different. Mm -hmm. from different do you have any, people. do you have any mentors right now? Yes, mm -hmm. I do. Um, so my mentor, he, uh, his name is uh, Tarek Shima, mm -hmm. and um, he's the founder of Global. Uh, um, oh my God. Uh, Global Donors Forum. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he does. He live in Minnesota. He doesn't live in mm -hmm. Minnesota. He lives in Chicago. He's a world traveler. Mm -hmm. So he's all over the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he was like a. He's also somebody that really inspires me and really. Um, brings so much insight into my life mm -hmm. um, because he was a former, you know, doctor mm -hmm. and uh, um, was a neurosurgeon, but then now wow. what he does is, you know, traveling around the world to make a difference. And now he's building a school for one million kids mm -hmm. in Pakistan. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then he also, like, the other inspiring thing is, like, he worked with Obama uh, when, like, you know, he left his job as a doctor and then started you know, working at the next gen, uh, next gen, like the organization mm -hmm. in uh, in Southside Chicago. Mm -hmm. Both him and Obama worked together. So it was. I mean, like he's done a lot of different things, mm -hmm. and I, you know, hope to do many of the great things that he's doing in the right. future. This is this has to feel good, and I've said this before, even on motivation. Better to live for something than to die for nothing, and to have purpose. And the only way to have purpose is actually get out there and make a difference, because people will. Forget what you say, but they're going to remember more what you've done. What you've done. The physical things. So. The people, I hear this all the time, talk, 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 talk. And that's talk. what's got to be action. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Let's talk. Right. More action. And let's make global health a mental health. I mean, like, let's make, you know, mental health a global priority. Right. I mean, like, that's what I hope to see. That, you know, we have, you know, uh, 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 um, how do I say this? That we you know, have mental uh, practitioners mm -hmm. all over the world, you know, and like especially in the refugee camps, mm -hmm. it's really, really needed. And those kids are like the most vulnerable right. children in right. the world right now. Right. If you're going to say one thing in the next 90 seconds that might motivate some young person out there watching the, this show, what would you tell them? Any be yourself, to be you. Um, and to be fearless, take the risk because you really don't know what can come out of it. You know, um, only you can determine your future. Nobody can tell you otherwise. Like you can only be the one that you know makes you know make it happen or you know not make it happen. Nobody else can tell you that but yourself. So continue on and just be yourself. That's all I'm gonna say. Because 
there's going to be a lot of people that are going to take you down and that are going to you know, tell you what to do and right. what not to do. Right. But if you know your ultimate goal and you know what you want to do with your life, right. nobody can break you apart. Right. So. And I agree. And I'm going to chime in with that. About 39 years ago, come February the 1st, I started personal training business. There was no personal trainers in the five-state area, and I started personal training. Five years later, all of a sudden, everybody started deciding they want to hire, get personal trainers in their, in their gyms. I had to just take that initiative. I ran an ad, had all these people say they were interested in training. Nobody had done that before. But I just took that leap of faith to say, I'm going to do this because I knew I had a gift to do it, to train people. Basically, what you're talking about, stepping out there, doing something. So if you feel like there's something that you want to do, do it. But do it. Yeah. Don't wait for anybody right. else to don't do sit it. Sit around and talk about it. If you it. don't see representation, represent. You know. Exactly. If you don't see something that's happening, be the person that makes it happen. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Give them your name and your email address and where they can buy your book again. So my name is Hafsa Mahmoud, and my email is actually in the back of this book. So it's the title of this book. It only takes one yes at gmail.com. And my website is onlyoneyes.org, so I hope to hear from you all soon. Yeah, good. Folks at home, I want to thank you for tuning in to Motivation. It's been my pleasure to have the lovely and the most talented Mrs. Mahoum, right? Mahmoud. 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 <laughs> Go ahead and hit me. Go ahead and hit me. It happens. It happens. But, folks, in all that you do, I want you to stay fit. I want you to stay blessed. And keep watching Motivation. We'll see you next time. And actually, thank this you. is goal three. This is what? Look at, like that color represents goal three. Okay, we're yeah. done though. We're done. We're done. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>